In this video, we're going to talk about camping with air mattresses, sleeping on air mattresses while camping. And more specifically, I'm going to review an air mattress that a company sent to me. The company is Luno Life, and the product is the Luno Signature Air Mattress. Before I talk about that mattress specifically, I want to talk about the pros and cons of sleeping on an air mattress in general. And we're talking about an air mattress versus, uh, for example, a foam mattress, a foam camping pad, foam sleeping pad, also versus a self-inflating sleeping pad. And the self-inflating ones are kind of in between. Um, there's foam inside of there and they self-inflate with, with air. They draw air in when you release the valve. But in this video, we're just gonna talk about air mattresses. To me, the biggest pro of an air mattress is that it's comfortable. Um, obviously, this will differ from person to person depending on what your body likes, but I like air mattresses. I think they're comfortable. I like that you can, that they're adjustable. You can um, adjust the amount of air in them so they're customizable essentially. And depending on your body type and how you sleep and what your preferences are, you can customize the air mattress to basically work well for you. Now this isn't necessarily for all air mattresses. A cheap air mattress is not super comfortable, but a good solid air mattress I think is comfortable. Another big pro of air mattresses is that they're super compact when you're not using them. So if you have limited storage space, you can just roll the thing up, stick it in its storage bag, stick it in your closet. Uh, I usually use foam mattresses when I'm camping and they're kind of a pain to store. It's doable, but uh, you have to kind of think it out and plan for the storage more than you do for an air mattress. Another pro of air mattresses is that they sleep relatively cool. So if you are usually hot when you sleep, an air mattress is a good option because um, there's no insulation. It doesn't go around you like, like foam does. Foam is a good insulator and so uh, if it's hot outside and if you sleep warm and if you sleep on a foam mattress, it can get hot. Uh, I've also heard someone say that um, their sweat and like condensation and everything soaked into their foam mattress, kind of like a sponge. You don't have that issue with an air mattress. Now let's go over some cons of air mattresses. First of all, the big one I think is that they can be punctured. If you're on a road trip somewhere and you get a hole in your air mattress, even though most of them come with, uh, with a repair kit of some kind, those don't always work super well. But if you, if you don't have that and if your mattress gets a hole in it, that's a problem. That's happened to me before, that's happened to, I know that's happened to my brother. He had an air mattress and it got a hole in it. He was tent camping up in the mountains somewhere. And uh, yeah, not a good night. He did not have a, a good night's sleep that night. Another con of air mattresses is that they can be thick, uh, much thicker than uh, other kind of mattresses, other kinds of mattresses. And so that means that you have less headroom in your vehicle. I'm, t I'm talking mostly about sleeping in your car here, but I, some of this can also apply to uh, sleeping in a tent. And so whether you're sleeping in a car or your tent, you'll have less headroom. In a tent, that's probably not much of an issue. In a car, like this Toyota Highlander that I've been sleeping in for the last week, uh, it is an issue. There's not a ton of headroom in this thing, so every little bit I can, I can get is great. And that's one thing that my wife noticed when she was camping in here. So the air mattress that I'm reviewing is in here, and um, I've been camping on it for the past several days. My wife and I also tested it out last week, and one of the first things that she said when she got in there was how little headroom she had compared to, uh, compared to the foam mattresses that we usually use. Air mattresses don't have insulation, and this can be a pro or a con. Like we were saying earlier, if it's hot outside, it's great, uh, you'll sleep cool. But on this trip, for example, I'm in Wyoming. It's still summer, it's August. I'm in the Yellowstone area, pretty high elevation. And the first night that I had this out here, had this, uh, this air mattress out here, I was really cold. I had a really uncomfortable night's sleep because air doesn't insulate. The, the back side of me, so if, if I was lying on my back, my back was cold because there was nothing warm, no insulation underneath me unlike a foam mattress or a, uh, a hybrid self-inflating air mattress. Another big con of air mattresses is that they seem to inflate and deflate or get harder or softer depending on air temperature and elevation. Like I said, uh, I'm in Wyoming now. Uh, I live in Idaho uh, and um, you know I, I go up into the mountains, I come back down into the valleys and there can be a big elevation difference, big change between those two. If I set up the air mattress in the car at home and I get it to a comfortable firmness and then go up into the mountains, it'll get harder 
it'll feel more pressurized. And the inverse is also true. Last weekend, we camped in the mountains at like 7,000 feet. We went back home down to about 4,500 feet and the mattress seemed to have lost a lot of air, but it didn't really, it was just the amount of pressure in the air uh, at different elevations made it seem that way. And so if you are traveling between elevations or but the same thing happens with temperature. Uh, if you go from a hot place to a cold place and vice versa, the, uh, the mattress will get harder and softer. If you do that a lot, it can be kind of annoying day after day on a multi-day trip to have to adjust that constantly uh, to get the right comfortable air pressure for you. And then the final con of an air mattress, of, of a lot of air mattresses that are basically just like one single air chamber, is that when there are two of you sleeping in there, the um, your partner, when they move around, you'll feel it. Or like if they leave the mattress, you'll sink down and once they get back on it, you'll boost back up a little bit. Again, that depends on the firmness you have and, and the number of chambers in the air mattress, but uh, that is something to, to think about. So that's a quick rundown of the pros and cons of an air mattress. Now let's talk about the air mattress that that company gave to me to review. It's the Luno Signature Air Mattress by Luno Life. Now the interesting thing about this air mattress in particular is that it's sized for different vehicles. And so if you, um, so for example, this one was sized for my wife's 2002 Toyota Highlander. And you can go to their website and punch in the make, model, and year of your car and they'll uh, say whether they have one that'll fit your vehicle or not. Here's the mattress with everything taken out and the two sides fully inflated, one side and the other. And you can see how it's sized to uh, fit the, the shape of the Toyota Highlander pretty darn well. I have only one side set up, one side inflated, which is another pro of this air mattress. It has two chambers, so when my wife and I were were camping last week, we each had our own chamber inflated and we could adjust it to uh, to our own personal preferences. And so it's just uh, it's just uninflated right here on the ground. They are connected. And the fact that they're connected makes it nice when you're when you're camping with someone else because you can you know you can cuddle together and if I'm sleeping over here my leg can be over here and it's just you know a smooth surface between the two. Uh, two sides of the air mattress. The two independent sides also help with the issue of, uh, of one person moving around. So um, like if I'm moving around a lot, even though the bed is connected, I don't think Cassie can feel it really well. And Cassie, my wife, when we were camping, uh, she was concerned that, that because the two sides are connected, that uh, her moving around during the night would wake me up because I'm a very light sleeper but it didn't, it wasn't really an issue in practice. One interesting thing about this mattress is that because it has the two different sides, it can basically fold in half. And so it's actually pretty easy to put it in and out of your car if it is inflated. You don't need to like wiggle it in there. Usually you'd put it in there unflated and then fill it up. But if you do wanna do it a different way, uh, you can do it with this mattress. Let me show you what I'm talking about here. Another pro of this mattress in particular is that it's comfortable. It's a high quality mattress. It just feels, it feels good. It's not like a cheap um, vinyl plastic. It doesn't feel like you're laying on a pool toy. You know, those inflatable air mattress things. Kind of slightly, not velvetized, but has a little bit of texture to it. And uh, it's a comfortable, comfortable surface to lay on. That said, I did sleep with a, uh, with a sheet over the top of it just because I'd rather feel cotton than than this fabric. Another pro of this mattress in particular is that it comes with everything you need. It comes with the mattress itself and a pump and a storage bag and a little repair kit sticker kind of thing. It also comes with, let me see what they call them, space blocks. And let me show you what I'm talking about here. So here's the mattress. And again, this side is deflated right now, but it comes with these two inflatable cubes, one for this side, one for the other side. And these fill up the space behind the front seat and in front of the, the top of the back seat when it's folded down. And so without this, there's a space. And let me show you that space on the other side. On this side, on, on the side that I've been sleeping on, I took the, the space block thing out and I'll, uh, I'll talk about that in a minute. And um, you can see that there's more of a gap here. 
And so the mattress does come with two of those kind of air block cube things. And, and again, I'll talk more about those in a minute. And so the pro is that it comes with all of those things, the mattress, the pump, the bag, and the two block things and the repair kit. The pro is that it comes with those. The con is that you don't necessarily need those things. And that's one of the main qualms I have with this because you're paying for that. This is not a cheap mattress. It's like $180, $190 um, in that range, give or take, depending on, on the vehicle that you have. And so it's not super cheap. It's a quality mattress. And so you, you'd expect to pay um, more than you would for a cheap pool toy again. But um, those block things, I don't think are necessary. I think that the company should not include those. I, th I think the mattress itself is great. I think you should be able to buy the mattress. And I think those spacer block things should be optional. Because look at this, here's the end of the seat and here's the mattress. That's only like, I don't know, three inches that it's covering. And so last night I tried it out without the spacer. I, uh, for most of the week I've been sleeping with the, the inflatable spacer thing in there. I took it out last night to see if it made any difference, and it doesn't. Now it might make a difference on your vehicle. On your vehicle, this thing might come back to here, and so there's a much bigger gap here, and so the, the end of the mattress will be floppy, and that's just not comfortable. But for me, and in this car, that's not an issue. And one really unfortunate thing about those spacer blocks, and again, I have that one in, in, uh, installed over here and inflated over there, the main bad thing is that it takes up this valuable space like i use this space to store things you can see i've got shoes in here and, and uh, you know some toiletries and i use that a lot on my trips and if you have those spacer block things it takes up that space so that's a big con of this system again i wish they uh, would have that to be optional and so overall do i recommend this should you get it um i think I wouldn't. I wouldn't have paid $200 for this. If I liked air mattresses, and I think I still prefer foam mattresses, if I liked air mattresses better, I would consider this mattress alone, like the, the bed part alone, if it were around $100. I think that's a fair price for a high quality air mattress. But as it is with the cons of this system, with the, the two block things, and then the, the cons of air mattresses in general, which are, um, you know, I talked about earlier, I wouldn't buy this, I wouldn't spend $200 on this. If you like air mattresses, and if you like the idea of having those inflatable spacers, then this is a good air mattress, and uh, and you'll be happy with it, I think. But what I do in my car, in my car, the, uh, the gap here is a little bit bigger in my RAV4, and what I do there is I just have a little piece of wood that goes from about here to here. It's a two foot square piece of wood, and uh, basically that's enough to keep this from happening with my air mattress, the, you know, the floppy top of the mattress thing happening. As far as other features of the air mattress go, it has valves that let you easily inflate it and deflate it, and it, it inflates in just a couple minutes. It inflates really quickly, and uh, it deflates quickly too, and then there's another valve kind of on the side where you can fine tune the uh, the amount of, of air in there. Like if you press on the valve, a little bit of air will come out and then you can just blow in with your mouth or with the pump uh, and add a little bit more air that way. And another question to ask is, will we use this again? Will I use this again? I think that we probably will. Like if, if my foam mattress is in my car and we don't want to take that out and take the other one out uh, from the house and put both of them into Cassie's car, then I can see us using this air mattress. Like I said, the mattress itself is, is a good mattress. And uh, one thing that I did um, after that first uncomfortable night when this was really cold, I just put, um, I had another sleeping bag, I put that on top of it, and I had a, another like fleece blanket that I put on top of, of the side of the mattress that I was using to give me some insulation. And that worked well. And so if you do want to use this uh, more than just, you know, high summer, then that is something that you'll probably have to do also. And so again, it's a well-designed product. It's, if we're talking about the bed itself, but I think the system as a whole uh, needs, needs work, especially at the price that they're asking. So that's it. Hope you found that information helpful and that review helpful. Let me know what you think. Let me know if you have any questions and I'll see you guys in the next video.